Um, hi everyone. So today we're going to go through the shark chondrocranium. So before we start, I just want to iterate, uh, chondro refers to cartilage, and then cranium is the cranium. Um, <laughs> the quote-unquote skull, the skull usually includes a little bit more. Um, so uh, at this end, the rostral end of the shark chondrocranium, we have the rostrum. So this is the rostral or anterior end, I should say. Um, one of the easiest ways, at least for me, to identify that I'm looking at the dorsal surface of the chondrocranium is to find the pre-cerebral cavity. Now, you don't need to know that term for your exam, but it is a helpful landmark just to be able to see. You can also look for um, a few other features that we'll get to in a second. But again, the rostrum, this first region, the effectively nose, quote-unquote, of the shark chondrocranium. Um, at the base, of the rostrum. You can see right here, there's two holes. Those are the rostral fenestrae, fenestra singular. Um, and then we'll start moving more posteriorly or caudally. Uh, and we have, first things first, on this side, the antorbital process. Um, and then we get to the lateral side. I'll show you the orbit, but it's a little hard to see from here. So we have the antorbital process. Let me see if I can, there we go. Followed by the supraorbital crest above the orbit, and then the post-orbital process. Um, and medial to those processes and crest, uh, we have these holes. Those are the superficial ophthalmic foramina. Okay. Um, moving more posteriorly, we have this depression. Um, so this is the endolymphatic fossa. And within that fossa, there are two foramina that you don't need to know for your exam, that they're kind of grayed out on your um, sheet, but uh, you can take a look at them for yourself. They're kind of cool. Um, and then there's one last thing that's the otocapsule. Again, you don't need to know that the otocapsule is like right in here. It contains things like the semicircular canals, which uh, may or may not see if we um, do shark brain. Um, now we're going to switch to the ventral view of the shark chondrocranium. Alright, that looks good right there. So we'll start at the rostral end again. Uh, if you look right up here, there's our rostrum from ventral view. Uh, at the, on the ventral side of the rostrum, there is this uh, sort of crest. It looks like a keel on a boat. It's called the rostral carina, or the medial septum. Um, but we'll, tech, we'll tend to use rostral carina um, in this class. Now, one thing you'll notice with almost all of the shark chondrocrania that we have in this lab is that the nasal capsule um, has, uh, for lack of a better term, exploded. Uh, <laughs> so you won't be able to see um, the nares on the nasal capsule, but we have those diagrammed for you. They're just um, holes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you should be able to identify those on the, on the diagram, or if we happen to have maybe one specimen that uh, has them well preserved, uh, which is dice those. Okay, so then where we can kind of see the orbit a little bit better. It's this big cavity that houses the eye. Uh, we have, our, again, our antorbital... Oops, sorry about that. The antorbital process, super uh, supraorbital crest, and postorbital process right there. And we'll move medially now, I, I think, uh, so we can see these processes right here. So these are the basitrabecular processes. So one, like this side, is the base trabecular process. It's just a projection, the base of the skull. Um, it articulates with something that we'll get to when we talk about the um, splanchnic cranium of the shark. Um, and then if we go posteriorly or caudally, again, we've got this carotid canal. So you might be able to see it. It's just a little dark spot right there. Um, and behind that, there's this is this big structure. It's called the basal plate. You don't need to know that term. Um, but just so you're aware, we have it labeled uh, so you can see it. And I missed one thing I'll point out right here. So this little structure, which we'll be able to see a little bit better on the lateral side, and I'll point it out again later, is the optic pedestal. So we've got one more, or a few more things to point out um, on the uh, ventral or dorsal side of the um, shark chondrocranium. So there's three whole, well there's technically five, but there's uh, 
one single hole and then two pairs of holes that come out of the uh, uh, caudal side of the contracranium. Now I'm going to try to turn this so we can see, but I also don't want any alcohol to come spilling out if there's any damage to the seal on the top. Um, and I think it might not be best for me to, to turn it right now. Um, but I can point out uh, down the midline coming out the back of this shark skull, the caudal side, is the um, uh, frame and magnum, just like in your skull. Lateral to that, you have the vagus frame and that comes out right about here. And then lateral to that one, the glossopharyngeal frame and comes out right around here. Uh, and if we do ask that on an exam, we would have it more clearly labeled or we'd have like, maybe both the glossopharyngeal and vagus foramen labeled so that you can see where exactly those holes are. You'd be able to see what we're asking you to see. Just lateral to the foramen magnum, which we can't really see from here again, um, and medial to the vagus foramen are these two little projections. Those are the occipital condyles uh, where we have the uh, uh, first cervical vertebra, but there's not really distinctions in sharks, to my knowledge. Um, but that is where the spinal column will articulate. Okay, now let's move over to the lateral side of the shark chondrocranium. That looks good right about there. Okay, so we'll start from the rostral end again. Um, so we have our rostrum right up here again. That's a nice landmark to look for. Uh, and then we'll move um, posteriorly or caudally. So there is a structure right here called the antorbital shelf. Uh, you don't need to know the term, but just know it, it has a name. Um, but what we want to focus on in this view is going to be um, some of the foramina that we uh, can see that enter into the orbit of the shark for the most part. So if you remember from our dorsal side, there are the superficial ophthalmic foramina, so you can see those expressed on this side of the shark contracranium once again. Uh, and again, this is the orbit, just so we're clear. It's the superficial ophthalmic foramina. Uh, this big hole that the string is going through, that is the optic foramen. So that is where your optic nerve, or the shark's optic nerve, I suppose, comes out into the eye. We can also see our optic pedicel right here. That's a good landmark to look for because there are actually several foramina that surround the optic pedicel. Um, there's two that you don't need to know that I'm going to go over really quickly here. So there's the oculomotor foramen. We'll talk about the oculomotor nerve in a later unit. And then the abducens uh, foramen is right down here. And we'll talk about the abducens nerve in the nervous system unit. And there is a fairly large um, foramen right here. Uh, just make sure you can see that. Okay, right there. So that is the trigeminofacial foramen. We do want you to know that one. Um, it is typically dorsal and caudal to the optic pedestal, so that's a good way to um, identify that one. Okay, so that covers the shark chondrocranium. Uh, and the next well, in one of the next videos, we'll cover the uh, shark splanchnocranium, uh, which includes all the gill arches, the mandible, and hyoid arch. Um, so we'll see that in a little bit. Um, thanks for listening. Take care.